MSNBC's Nicole Wallace unleashed a diatribe against, quote, election denying Republicans on air yesterday. Let's watch. They are running to sow discord in America, and it will change everything. We will wake up the morning after Election Day. We might not even call it that anymore in two years. We might not call it Election Day. We might call it Election Week because what we are watching and because it's so slow, it's so slow. We don't cover it as a five alarm fire, but it is. We are watching Republicans not just destroying democracy in the dark, breaking into election officers and plugging stuff in. We're watching them do it from rally stages. Do you think it requires, you know, a democracy commission? Should 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 President Obama ask Chris Christie and Ben Ginsburg to sort of man a democracy hotline the way, you know, people used to man other crises? I mean, what should we do? Nicole Wallace isn't the only MSNBC host with a message for Republicans. Civilians. Hey, freaks, fascist freaks on the right. There is no moral ambiguity here. There, there, there is no comparison between Russia and Ukraine. And, and you prove yourself to be the fascist that you are when you suggest the same. I, I, <laughs> How about this democracy hot like 1-800-D-E-M-O-C-R? C R A C Y. I can't spell it. So never I spell Y, Robbie. <laughs> and then, no, it's like a, when your powers combine, Captain Democracy appears I, like, on MSNBC. Here's the thing. I guess I, I have I have no interest in pretending that there are not some really inappropriate behaviors on the right. You know, there is audio of Trump calling the Georgia Secretary of State and trying to get him to overturn the election. Like, like we know that that happened. And I don't want anything that I'm about to say to try to minimize the reality of those kinds of very explicit moments of election interfering. That's not hyperbole. That's like literally what happened. Okay. However, I do think that some of these figures, and I would note that both of the people talking there are Republicans. They are the beloved Republicans mm -hmm. of MSNBC. It's Nicole Wallace, George Bush's comms woman, and Joe Scarborough, you know, a congressional Republican, um, formerly, who are apparently the key advice givers to Democrats about what they should, should be aware of and what they're warning about. And frankly, what it sounds to me is that they are warning about their own, like their, that, that advice they should be giving to their, their own party, to be honest. And Democrats should be doing some better introspection than that about why it is that nobody trusts them and nobody believes that they, even as there are these clear evidence, so this clear evidence that Republicans have had this attack on democracy, why people aren't so invested in the idea of Democrats being the ones that can actually protect it and make people's lives better. <laughs> Ukraine good, Russia bad, Trump Nazi, media good. Yeah, that that's basically. I'm not afraid to say it. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Robbie, like that, that, it, is, it, it is absurd. It is, it, and again, it's not that I have any interest in saying Putin isn't culpable for an invasion or taking this, but this complete and total flattening. Of, yeah. as, of an explanation of what's going on in the world. No, matter, no wonder people are turning off this news station. When this news station's view is that this situation calls for a democracy commission? What? We don't, do we ever need a commission? Is the commission ever the answer to any problem? I mean, what are they talking about? Look, yeah, Republicans want to win. They want power. They're willing to do almost anything it takes. That's also kind of true of Democrats. It's yes. not exactly the same, but Look they at these stories also... out of California. Part, part of the story about the, the racist uh, city council members is that they were doing it. Part, part of their discourse that wasn't like the racist bit was how they were going to elbow out progressive N N N Nithya Raymond out, out of office. Right. Like it's, it's all, We've done story after story about how Democrats will align against the populist parts of their own party that, frankly, I think have the potential for much broader appeal and put more money and energy, corporate money and dark money, to defeat them in primary than they ever spend defeating Republicans. And frankly, they're paying Republicans. <laughs> they're funding right-wing right Republicans. 100%. And we saw that so many that's times. That's the strategy. Yes, yeah. So who is the enemy here? How, at a certain point, how mad can you be at the public for being confused about who they're going to trust? We're watching Republicans on MS, MSNBC give the Democratic right. Party advice about how to basically ignore voters' concerns because everything is just about tribalism. Right. And that people can't be spoken to, people can't be persuaded, people can't be convinced. Don't, even, don't bother asking the public what their interests are, what, what is motivating 
um, them well, in voting. No, Nicole Wallace already knows. Joe Scarborough already knows. And they're going right. to tell Those you. Those people were run out of the Republican Party. And not actually, right. those two people were not run out of the Republican Party for like, mm. bo- like in the way that Ben Sass is being run out mm. or Rom because they actually, because they said Bad no to Trump. Yeah. These people were run out of the Republican Party because they had pro war neoconservative yeah. views that Republican voters never really liked and yeah. finally ultimately rejected decisively. Yeah. So now they're hawking those views to the Democratic Party and to mainstream media audiences. Yeah. What, what is frustrating? I mean, obviously, we talked in other segments about the Kanye story, and we spoke with um, you know Tesla and, F- Tesla and Figaro about how there have been other more credible figures than Kanye, it, who are Black American, you know, famous people who have called out the Democratic Party as not doing much in the way of actually helping Blacks and other historically marginalized groups, poor people, generally speaking. And I think the, the problem has always been. No one really knows where to go next in terms of an off-ramp, because most people also acknowledge and understand that a corporatized Republican Party is also not serving the interests of poor and working class people. And there is an excitement about things like the Forward Party and Andrew Yang. People are desperate for some way out. But the reality is that we're in this lockstep. So we do get into this place where you can't criticize Democrats without being told you're a Republican toady. You can't uh, criticize Republicans without being accused of loving uh, Joe Biden. Half the comments on this show are very confused, and they think that I'm in some deep love affair with Joe Biden, as though, well, meanwhile, everybody on Twitter thinks I'm the Antichrist because I hate Joe Biden so much. And, it, and it's because we don't have alternative options in this Everyone country. on Twitter also thinks I'm the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> well, with our powers combined. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we should start, we should chair that democracy commission, Brianna. <laughs> that's, that's how we fix America. We put you, you and I in charge of the democracy commission and make everybody in the country mad. Oh, sounds good. There, there are more, there's more than one way to heal. Uh, we have more rising than you could ever possibly dream of coming up next. Stay with us.